All right, get your notes out. Let's wrap up what we were talking about in class today and talk about bases. And so just like in class, when we talked about a strong acid versus a weak acid, uh, in here, I just want to talk about a strong base versus a weak base. And we're going to go pretty quick because, honestly, it's really a similar idea. I mean, in terms of strong and weak, it's the same idea. So strong base, just like strong acid, that means that it completely, 100% ionizes when dissolves in water. And a weak base, just like a weak acid, doesn't. So does not completely ionize. So something less than 100%. and most importantly, reaches equilibrium. You see pretty much the same idea here. Um, now, just like with the strong acids, there were some that you had to memorize with the strong base. These are, and so this is something to know, these are gonna be the hydroxides of the alkali metals. I think, do you know what the alkali metals are? First family, right? Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, etc. And what I'll use is a mnemonic CBS, which are the ones in the second family, specifically calcium, barium, and strontium. So that's what those, that CBS is just a little mnemonic to help you remember those three. So calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide. Those are the strong bases. Weak bases are a little weird. So one thing you should know about weak bases is that they usually contain nitrogen. So that's going to be your big clue right here is that it contains nitrogen. So for example, CH3NH2, nitrogen, or everyone's favorite ammonia is a typical weak base. And the key with this is that they act as a Bronsted-Lowry base, which means they are a proton acceptor. So I'll show you an example of that because um, we'll do just like we did with acids examples of each of those um, to kind of wrap this up. So here's here's the example. First we'll do strong. It's just like a strong acid except we're a strong base. And so let's say that we have a 0 0.010 molar sodium hydroxide solution and we want to know who what the pH is. And so this is a strong base because this is an alkali metal with hydroxide. So this is a strong base. I'm going to make a little note here. Do not react it with water. And this is for when we write the equation. It just makes our life simpler. So I'm going to, much like I did with the, the acids, so we have NaOH, aqueous, it's gonna break up into Na plus. So this is like when we originally put the it in and it, like the weak ones, completely ionizes. So one way arrow into Na plus and OH minus. Uh, these are aqueous, but we're not gonna react it with any water, just to do that. And just like with the strong one, I'm gonna do a little ice table, but it's not an equilibrium ice table. This goes to the end. So if we started with a 10th no, point oh, sorry, point oh one molar. And before any of it actually broke apart, we'd be zero and zero. But because it goes to completion, then this ends up at zero. So we lose point oh one oh, and it's a one to one to one ratio. So we're going to gain point oh one oh. And so we end up with this. And with the acids, we notice we had H plus. We don't have H plus, but what we are going to notice is that we have OH minus, and we know pH and pOH are related. So there's two ways that we can approach this. I'll show you both. You can pick the one you like better. We know that H plus times OH minus is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And in this particular case, um, if you plug this value 
in here and you solve for h plus, you find that the h plus will be equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 12. And then if you take the negative log of that h plus, the pH is 12.00, two digits past the decimal because we had two sig figs. So that's one way. Another way is I could solve for the pOH which is negative log of the H plus. So negative log of 0 0.010. The pOH, when you do that, is 2.00. And I know that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. And so therefore, the pH is equal to 12.00. Gives you the same answer. Don't care which approach you can use. Whichever one you like. Okay, So that's strong. All right, the other one then is weak. And so same thing, if I have a solution of 0 0.010 molar, and I'll use ammonia, and I want to know the pH, but because it's equilibrium, we're going to need a KEQ. Well, the KEQ when it was an acid was Ka. The KEQ when it's a base is, surprise, surprise, Kb. And the Kb for ammonia is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Please do not get that confused with the fact that acetic acid's Ka was 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. That is totally a coincidence. All right, weak. When you're writing the equation, do react it with water. In fact, this is the only one that you absolutely, positively have to do this. So I'm going to bubble that, right? You have to, have to, have to. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to write an equation so we can figure out what its pH is. But if I react ammonia with water, which is what I just told you you have to do, and the arrows go both ways because it's equilibrium, this is a, going to accept a hydrogen. And in fact, I've used this probably in class before. Um, and therefore, this is what's going to remain because one of the hydrogens is going to pop over here. Great. Well, guess what, you guys? It's equilibrium, just like we talked about before. If it's equilibrium, that means there's the four steps. There's the balanced equation. Here's my KEQ, which I'm going to call a KB. It's a KB when it's a base plus water. And that's going to be the concentration of ammonium times the concentration of hydroxide over the concentration of ammonia. These are all aqueous, but not water because that's a liquid. So that's going to be my KEQ or my KB. So now I'm going to go ahead and do an ice table. This is a true ice table. E is, well, they're all a true ice table, but this is our equilibrium. And so we're going to start with 0 0.010. I don't have to fill this one out because it's a liquid. 0 and 0. But now I'm not going to completion, right? So if I don't know how much I'm going to lose or gain, I'm going to use... Yeah, x. So I'm going to lose some and I'm going to gain some. This is just like our other stuff from equilibrium. Well, that's my fourth step, ice table. And then I can do the math, right? So my Kb, which I know is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, is equal to x times x over 0 0.010 minus x. And at this point, I can actually use the shortcut if I wanted to. If I want to do the shortcut, then the 5% rule, I assume that this x is negligible. And if it is, I solve for x. I can do the algebra. You guys, pause and do the algebra. Like, see if you can do it in your calculator. But when you do that, you get x is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 4 if we just get rid of this x we should check to make sure we can do that. And so we want to make sure that this is less than 5% of that. So when I do that, nope, sorry, that is not the pen I wanted. 4.2 times 10 to the minus 4 over 0 0.010 times 100, that gives me 4.2%. And so it's less than 5%, so it's totally valid. But here, you guys, don't get confused. X is hydroxide. So I don't just take the negative log of that and call it done. So that means my OH minus is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. 
If I want to find pH, you can do it the two ways we mentioned over here. I'm just going to do the pOH. So pOH is negative log of my OH minus. So negative log of 4.2 times 10 to the minus 4. If I plugged it in my calculator, I get 3.38, and that's my pOH. So since pH plus pOH is equal to 14.00, if I subtract that out, I get a pH of 10.62. And so just big picture, you guys, I want you to notice same concentration of strong gives me a pH of 12. Same concentration of a weak base gives me a slightly lower pH. It's not quite as basic, which makes sense because it did not totally break apart into its ions. All right, that wraps that up. If I can find my thing to turn it off, good job.